Hello everyone, this is Debeer from Pokertube and this is video two of the instructional videos I'm doing for Sharkscope. And this one, uh, remember in the first one we covered player statistics, and this one we're going to be looking at find a tournament and tournament selector. And how powerful these options are on the Sharkscope website and how you can use them to your advantage, not only to make yourself or help you become a better player, but also to target your skills at the relevant, for example, sit and goes, so that you're not out of your depth and you give yourself the best opportunity of making money because in the end that's what we're trying to do so without any further hesitation let's get stuck in there and have a look at these fantastic tools and show you how you can use them to your advantage now i've actually got two um software engines running in the background here i've got titan and stars so i can use some live examples so this is going to be coming straight as we go so bear with me whilst i do this uh the first option here on find a tournament as i say is very much a sit and go tool but you can use it for looking at for example tournaments that are finished so i've got one here that i looked at earlier um, and I'll just show you how useful it can be. This is on the iPoker. This was on the Titan iPoker. And this was one here that was uh, done a few days ago. Third of the fifth, as you can see there, number of entrants. There's the buy-in. There's the game code. And that just gives you an overall rating for the tournament. Average ability, that's quite high, actually, for a tournament. Uh, there's the ratings of stars of number of sharks, star players, fish in there. And then you can see basically who's won it. And then if you want to do some homework, for example, on somebody, then you can, for example, let's say we wanted to look at who finished second, okay? Click on him, and for one search, up pops his details. So he hasn't played that many on the iPoker, 266, but I'm sure he's a very happy bunny winning that event there with a 17,000 profit to his name. Look at that, boom. So up to that point there, he was down $700, but look at that, he's now up 17,000. That'll be a very happy player. So if we bring it back to this section here, that's obviously for the actual just looking at closed events. But what we want to look at for uh, is for actually live running sit and goes. So if we're only playing maybe two or three sit and goes, we really want to target certain ones. This is one way you can do it. So if you see one, you think, well, that looks interesting. What you could do, for example, is type in the code. I've got one here I looked at a few seconds ago. Fingers crossed it's still registering. It's on the iPoker network. Hit search. There we go. I'll bring this one up for you here. This is a jackpot sit and go, the Maui one. Um, five buck buy-in, we've got four entrants automatically at the top here. See how it's, auto it's refreshing whilst we're looking at this. It gives me player prof profits, just a little graph. It gives me a fishbowl here. Average ability is 57. So just by looking at that, I'm pretty comfortable looking at that. I'll be it. I've got one person who's locked his stats. We can't see him. But if I want more information on this, remember it's a sit and go. I just click on this. Go to sit and go only. And there you go. For those people who haven't locked their stats, which is the vast majority of people, it's going to bring up their information in a flash. Whilst we're speaking, a couple of people have just registered. Now look at that. Now it's 6 out of 10. This is a jackpot sit and go. Without hesitation, I'm in there. It's now got a double goldfish bowl. But look at the minus ROIs there. That just tells me this is just so tasty. Somebody's just joined who's a winning player, but not by much. Again, we're up to eight. You see how, see how automatic this is? And I mean, I've got this running in the background. I click it, enter, I'm in there. Um, this is a great way of, of you having the knowledge to be able to make an informed decision on whether you want to play in an event or not. And for me, that is just, as I would say in my terminology, super tasty. <laughs> now we've talked about player classifications, for example, goldfish bowl. Um, but up here, just so you know this, and under options, if you go to configuration, there's a define player classes. So in there, it'll actually bring up the classifications that shark scope use. And it tells you what, a, by default, what a big shark is, what a fish is, gives you the formula there for it, what the average ROI, uh, game count it uses, and medium shark. However, some of you might not agree with that. Some of you might want to put your own classifications in. Maybe you want to put in an extra classification, like maybe not fish, but sea monster. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So like there's fish, which is like semi-bad. Sea monster is shocking. Then you've got shark, medium shark, or maybe you've just got like an average player and you want to give them a classification. Not a problem. Hit the plus box, put the name in, give them an icon and put in the formulas yourself. How great is that? Now, as you saw there, I had this option here for sit and go, but you can see here, for example, I've got actually filters here. I'm going to show you how to use these filters. I'm going to actually delete them in a second and show you how to make your own filters, uh, but which are very handy for actually searching people. Uh, I want people, should we say, certain events of a certain amount. And the way you do that is not on searching an individual event, but you would use tournament selector to do that. So let's just go to that just now. And by default, tournament selector 
will recognize which part of the world you're in and it will bring up the networks in your area that you can basically get involved in. Um, that's, that's what I've been advised by Sharpscope. So uh, as you can see here, I've got 12 networks for myself. So what I want to do here, for example, is think, all right, I've got three main accounts that I've got money in, okay? And obviously, the biggest spread, if I want to play more than one or two sit and goes, I would say, all right, well, let's uncheck all these. Let's go to this here, and I'm going to pick three ones. So let's say Party, Stars, and iPoker. That covers quite a lot, yeah? Would you agree with that? So let's say I want to do that, and I want to play, because um, Stars is nine man, isn't it? I want to play nine and ten man sit and goes. So hang on, let's move that to ten. Okay, so I get it to 10 and get that to 9. And I'm happy to play stakes from 10 bucks up to 50. Yeah. Hit search and look at that. Within an instant, up all that information pops up on events registering just now that are not full. Now look at this. There's the codes. There's the network. There's the stakes. Players hold them. And all of a sudden, within a, a few brief seconds, I have got a vast array of events that I can enter if I want to. So, for example, look at this party poker one. I've got two goldfish bowl here. That is just very, very tasty. Look at the graph there. Average ability 61. Uh, what I can do here, just so you, whilst I'm talking, is I'd actually sort the average ability. All right. If it's got a rating on it, these haven't got ones yet. So it's still. Hasn't got enough information, so these people probably haven't played it much. But here, for example, I've got a 53 here. That's on party poker. Uh, seven people in it. I'm in there before. I mean, I wouldn't even have to look at the individuals. I'll be in there like a flash. But if you want a bit more information, if we're not sure, we click on it here. Here's the party information. That gives me it there. Okay. If I click on this and go to sit and go only, because it is a sit and go, I want to just see the sit and go stats. Don't ask for all, because all will include tournaments. It's refreshing the data whilst we speak. And whilst I was doing that, literally other people have jumped in and have missed my opportunity. But don't worry. <laughs> you will get it quicker because I'm talking to you. If you're doing this yourself and not talking and doing a video, it will be a lot quicker. You wouldn't miss that. So in this particular case, for example, if I wanted to look at it, like I said, I didn't need to. I know that's a good one to go in. Look at this ROI. Every single player is minus. I mean, for me, that is just like dive in there. I mean, that is just a golden opportunity with... With the number of sit and goes I've played, the, the level I, I know I can play to and, and do well at, that would be a very easy one to enter straight away, and I'm in there. So if we go back to our main screen here, remember, I, I, I haven't put any filters in here. It's bringing up holding ones, but you can put types to exclude, types to uh, include, remember, so if you want to narrow the search down. Um, now, on that's a 9 to 10 man on the three networks, which I said is iPoker, Stars, and Party, okay? That is 10 to 50. So if I wanted to keep that as my default search, what I would do here is I would save current, and let's just say I wanted to call it bear sit and goes, okay? So I just type in bear sit and go uh, filter, yeah? Like that. Save that. And whenever I wanted it in future, it's there. And I can make a whole load of filters. So let me give you another example. If I want to just do poker stars, nine man uh, sit and goes, 10 to 50, okay? I would uh, just go search that. That is the stars one. I want to save this filter, so save current. And we'll call that um, stars. I'm just using it as an example. Sit and go filter. Now you can actually put in like ten dollar, or you can put more specifics. But I would just, that, I would know what it is. Do you know what I mean? Because it's my filter, and that just brings up the stars ones. If I then click back, right? So there's the stars one. That's to my generic one, which is the three sites. I hit search. See how quick it is. Very good. What you can also do here is you see you've got a wee dine arrow here on the search button. If you put that on, auto refresh for one minute, see that? It's auto refreshing. Boom, boom, boom. Anything pops up that I'm interested in, it's refreshing it for me all the time, which is fantastic. So let's look at another one for us, shall we? So if we want to go and pick, uh, let's say we're not sure about one. So for example, if we change this average ability like, and put it in order here, let's say we've got one where we've got one in the iPoker network. Ooh, that's got a lot of sharks. But hang on, the graph doesn't make a lot of sense here. I've got 7 out of 10. I've got iPoker running in the background, so I can get into it very quickly, but I haven't got much of a time. As I said, this is all about time critical. So I click on that. See how quick it is? I'm not sure. So on this one, I want to see sit and go stat data for these people. Still 7 out of 10. All right, and, and somebody must be all three. All, yeah, all right, so we've got a positive there of only 200 bucks. He's not played a lot. A little positive there. He's only just started playing, so wouldn't count him. And again, not played a lot. So what am I looking here? Nothing to be fearful of. You know what I mean? For, for me, I've got one goldfish ball there. So I think, nah, 
that rating there, I don't think that's that's that's, that's a, all right. There's three positives, but the positives aren't that much to be scared of. I mean, this guy's got a 77 rating, but he's only played one game, so I wouldn't count that. You know, so I'd be in there and I'd be I'd be having a go at that one. And you can see how basically you can just target events where you think, well, all right, I've got an edge here. I know there's X number of losing players in there and there's X number of winning players. Do I want to play in it or not? So let's look at one where it looks pretty nasty. So if we go down the bottom here, we've got a 27 buck one, which has got a 76 rating. There's three in there and we've got one with two shocks, 75 rating. So let's look at the bottom one. OK, let's pull that up. There's four people in it now, four out of nine. Okay, I'll uh, just close this because that's the previous data, which is saved. So if we go to uh, sit and go filter, if we want a more specific information. Here we go. This brings up some information on these people. Now, there's an opt-in box here, which I'll talk about in another video for stars only. But I've got most of the data here. Now, this is an event you just do not want to play. This, this is sit and go. Look at this. 6,000, 7,000. This is the actual games these people have played. 5,000, 6,000, 12,000. I mean, look at this. Silver star, when you highlight it, it tells you how, how successful this person is. Gold star. And the calendar icon basically tells you that person's reset the stats and you get the information from that. But look at this. Look at the um, average ROI. I mean, this is just no way, man. You do not want to be playing that unless unless you want to target that to try and improve your skills. So that's where you can think, all right, I'm going to pay for my education. That's a tough event. Tell you what, let's go and play a few of them. So you can use it on a training basis, like I mentioned before. But if you're looking to make money, you don't play in that event. <laughs> End of. <laughs> now, in just a few clicks, you've been able to get a wealth of information and if, for example, some of your opponents aren't aware of it, aren't using it, then it's giving you a significant edge. And even if they are using it, you can avoid the good players. You know, like that event we've just seen. I mean, right at the bottom, I mean, I wouldn't play that unless I was there to, 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 as a challenge for myself or, or as a training video I was doing or I wanted to try and better myself. There's just no point playing that. I mean, the edge I have is non-existent. Um, so let's look for something which is a little more fishy. And that's where the goldfish balls come in. Now you'd have seen this open button is only on the stars ones. Well, a little trick here for you. This is purely between stars and sharp scope. Phenomenal bit of technology here. If you had the tournament opener, that little box that I've just shown you, up pops this uh, little screen. There you go. And there's a little bit of software there. And if you download that, when you download it, don't run it, save it to your hard drive, then run it from there. Uh, and then once it's run and set up, put a little icon on your desktop. All right, basically I've got that ready to go. So when you actually download, save to your hard drive, then run it, up pops this box here. I've got it running in the background already. And there you go. That's for PokerStars and Shots. If we go back to this screen again where the open is. With this running in the background and obviously stars open, we're going to have it open. Watch. Let's just say we see an event here that we think, oh, this looks really tasty. So, for example, i got a 4 out of 9 here, $25 one, 55 average ability, two Fischelinos. Um, Excuse the terminology, but that's me being sarcastic. <laughs> I'm in there before I even buy, buy anything else. I don't need to look at anything else. I just hit open. Boom, up it pops. I just hit the register button and I'm in there like that. Not a problem. Okay, so just bring it back to this main screen here, people. So let's just say we wanted to use this for training purposes. So for example, I've got a 44 buck one here in stars. I've got a shock icon there. And look, we've got a star here. That tells me when these players is good. Look at the average ability. Three greens here from what I can see. So let's have a wee peek see at this. We know it's decent. From what we can see, let's get the data on the individuals in question. Well, one person's reset their stats here. So let's just go um, sit and go filter here. Uh, as in, like, bring up the individual stats. So there we've got data on two of these players and one's locked. This person's reset his stats. Um, but he's 27 grand up. Look at this. 11 grand up. Sit and go. These are regs. Very good regs. Ability 8680. This is a tough one. All right, so if we wanted to play this all for training purposes to put ourselves against good sit and go players, look, there's the open button there. Just click it, boom, should pop up in a heartbeat. It's there, there it is there, just pops up, hit register, I'm in. It's as simple as that. How good is that? The open button is right there in front of you when you're actually looking at the player data. I think that's fantastic. So uh, as I say, it's, it's a very, very powerful tool for back arrow here and just bring it back to the main screen for you. And like I say, if you're a multi-tabler and speed is of the essence, you can see how valuable that is. Events you want to play in, with strong players if you're training, people you want to avoid, and you can target the right event for yourself and for your level of skill if you know, if you know what I'm coming from. So this is really nice to have here with the, um, the open button here on Stars. But even if you don't have that on the other networks, if you've got the software running in the background, like, you know, your, your, your iPoker account, whatever, just type in the code, you're there very quickly. 
Now, obviously with me showing you all this information with the filters, the search options, the ability to actually target events that you know you've got an edge in and those ones you can avoid, you can see how powerful uh, and sophisticated this software is. Now in poker, there's lots of things people talk about. There's, there's like there's the nice to haves and then what I class as the essentials. So your poker tracker, your books, your training videos, you know, some of them are nice to have, some of them are very important. But things like this, the Sharp Scope software and how you use it, like I've given you some examples, this isn't a, a nice to have. This is, in my opinion, a must have. It must be part of your arsenal. In today's modern uh, world of technology, the, the ability to, to home in on events, like I've just given you a few examples of, is just incredible. And you really want to use it. As I say, I would strongly recommend it. And I know I've used it myself just last week. I tried it out myself. I saw a fish, um, fish icon sit and go, sat in, I actually won it. Now I'm a hobby player, uh, but I have used it. And I, I'm a keen hobby player. I've used this software way back in 2007. And in future videos, I'll hopefully be able to do some live demonstrations of using this software to your advantage. But way back in 2007, I actually did a demonstration using ShortScope, showing how a hobby player like myself could actually make a nice Nice bit of profit from this. So, on that very happy note, people, hope you've enjoyed this video. There's a lot of information here. We're going to cover some more stuff in, in future videos in a lot more detail, but there's a lot here to get your teeth into. As I say, it's a phenomenal piece of software. I strongly recommend it, and you can see the advantages when it's used correctly. So, on that very happy note, take care.